We have new numbers regarding Linux market share, and it has me wondering, has Steam Deck growth stagnated? Plus, there's new changes to AMD graphics drivers that'll increase performance by 50,000%. You heard that right. And a brand new stable Steam client for the desktop and the deck brings one of the biggest changes to PC gaming in over a decade. So let's talk about this. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. All right. Let's talk about this. January's Steam hardware survey has released and the results are interesting. In December, Linux market share declined by six one hundredths of a percent, falling from 1.44% in November to 1.38% in December. And with the latest Steam hardware survey, January saw that number stay steady at 1.38%. With a fall in December and the numbers being exactly the same this month, it has me wondering, has the Steam Deck's growth slowed? Well, look, anytime we're gonna talk about the Steam hardware survey, it helps to remember that these are relative numbers. It's entirely possible, and in fact, very likely, that the absolute numbers have grown in all categories. That means that Windows growth in December outpaced Linux growth, and that this month, the two were on par. Though, it's interesting to note that macOS growth here ate into Windows share in January but Linux stayed the same. However, if we look at some of the other health indicators of uh, the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck remains number one in sales revenue on Steam, and it's been there for almost a year, only losing the top spot to games like Elden Ring. I, I think it's safe to assume that the Steam Deck is here to stay and its growth hasn't slowed down one bit. Though it would be nice if Valve would release some real sales figures here, but that's just my curiosity getting the best of me. What do you think about these numbers? What do they say to you? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. All right, next up, in case you missed it, my last video was a review of the Project Kill Switch, which is dbrand's attempt at a complete uh, protection and accessory package for Steam Deck. Well, it seems that the DeckMate, an attachment system for Steam Deck that I've also reviewed here on the channel, has released an adapter to make DeckMate accessories compatible with the Kill Switch mounting plate. Now, this is pretty rad as it allows users to use the attachments for DeckMate on the Kill Switch, and you can even 3D print this adapter yourself. And what's more is that the STL file is available free of charge on DeckMate's website. That is so awesome. Seeing as this is a solid way to get a bunch of accessories for your Kill Switch, I'd recommend giving it a try, especially if you have a 3D printer. And the thing is, one of my favorite accessories for the DeckMate that I didn't get to explore before my review went live is the VESA mount. Now this allows you to mount your deck to a VESA arm or other compatible stand. And now you can use that VESA mount with your Kill Switch case. That's pretty nifty. Okay, back in November, we talked about DXVK 2.0. This release included some significant work done in regard to shader stutter. For those not in the know, shader stutter is when a shader is called for by a game, but it hasn't been built yet for your GPU. This results in the game pausing to wait for the shader to be compiled before displaying it for the first time. Once a shader is compiled, it gets cached and doesn't need to be compiled again. That's why many gameplay experiences improve over time, especially on AMD hardware. Well, this is where the November 2022 release of DXVK comes in, because it includes a patch that implements a 50,000% speed increase over the previous release. This is due to the new implementation of VKEXT graphics pipeline library. Now look, there's a truly engaging read over on Mike Blumenkrantz's blog about the details here. But suffice it to say that games which utilize this Vulkan extension see huge speedups in terms of shader caching and virtually eliminating shader stutter altogether. And I'm not kidding about the blog post either. I mean, Mike is a terrific and naturalistic writer. And if you have ever had any interest, even a passing interest in any kind of like software optimization, check out his blog post. Even after I grasped the basics of what he was talking about early on in the article, I read the whole thing because it was so interesting to me. Now, the fact is DXVK 2.0 requires some other driver updates, so we probably won't see that uh, until another stable release of SteamOS on the Steam Deck, uh, but it is in the pipeline and I thought this was a fascinating read, so uh, check out his blog post. It's great. Okay, did you hear that Twitter suspended the Japanese Steam Deck account? Yeah, they did. Now the question is why? And it 
Doesn't seem like anybody has an answer to that. Now, it's speculated that it was an automated suspension of some kind, and the account is back now, so who knows? But this is a perfect example of why Twitter is a dead platform, and it makes me wonder why Valve is not on Mastodon already. And speaking of, if you want to follow me on Mastodon, you can use the links below. And you can also like that smash button. And by liking this video, you'll be well on your way to seeing more videos just like this. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. And if you didn't know, I'm giving away a Steam Deck to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. So check the description for a link to that as well. And thanks. Well, earlier in the week, the Dead Space remaster dropped for PC and I got my hands on it. I published an article about my early experiences with it on deck, which you can check out at ViewSync. Suffice it to say that on day one, it didn't work very well on the deck. There were serious issues compiling shaders, stuttering and crashing. I even had the game softlock right after the opening cutscene with the NPCs being stuck in an idle animation. But less than 24 hours later, Valve had a fix for Proton that made everything just work. I have been playing through it recently and it's been a great experience after this update. Anyway, this has been another impressively quick response to new releases. It's just too bad that developers aren't yet working directly with Valve to produce fixes for their upcoming games. That would be really nice to see. Next up, there's great news for folks in Japan, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Taiwan. The Steam Deck is now in stock. Well, except for the 64 gigabyte model in Japan, but the 256 and 512 model are available in Japan and all models are available in the other three regions. This means that orders placed today will be shipped within two weeks of purchase. Quite the lead time, I know, but they're working with what they got. Furthermore, the official docking station is now available in Hong Kong and South Korea, but it remains backordered and reservation only in Japan and Taiwan. Now, this is exciting stuff, and I hope that Valve partners with other companies in other regions soon to make the deck available in more territories. There's a global hunger for this device, as evidenced by the comments on my videos, and I would love to see the Steam Deck shipping worldwide as soon as possible. Now, it's hard to believe that Steam Big Picture Mode is over 10 years old at this point. Debuting back in 2012, Big Picture Mode provided a controller-driven interface for Steam. This was in an effort to deliver PC gaming to, quote unquote, the best screen in the house. But over the years, updates and features to Big Picture Mode have slowed to a crawl. And when they do arrive, they feel kind of half-baked and tacked on, kind of like afterthoughts rather than first-class citizens. That all changed yesterday as of recording, February 1st, when Valve announced that Big Picture Mode is now defaulting to the Steam Deck styled UI. And let me just say, thank God. As I said, Big Picture Mode has been showing its age recently. I was streaming Big Picture Mode from this PC to my Nvidia Shield the other day, and I just was like, oh my God, I can't handle how bad Big Picture Mode feels given how much I love the Steam Deck's UI. Now, given that Steam Deck development is a high priority for Valve and the UI between the two is now more or less unified, this should mean more features for both platforms should roll out around the same time. Now, I've been waiting since day zero of the Steam Deck launch for the old big picture mode to be retired in favor of this new design, and it is just wonderful to see. The UI is sharp, it's clean, and it's friendly. The audio cues are significantly more inviting than the previous selection of sound effects. Navigation is better, and I'm just an overall huge fan of the new big picture mode. If for some reason you need access to the old version of BPM, you can still get access to it by launching the Steam client with the old big picture flag. But this is temporary and it will be retired at some point in the future. Okay, friend of the show, Jackson Emch, has written an article over on ViewSync where he compares his GPD WinMax 2 to the Steam Deck. This is a fascinating article and one I'm proud to feature on my website. You can find a link to it on screen or in the description. Finally, we get to talk about this stable Steam Deck client. Now, the latest client has released with a ton of new features and fixes that I've been waiting for. Replace launch option dialog with new UI that includes a checkbox to remember the user selection. This selection can be changed in game properties. Changing download regions no longer requires restarting the Steam client. Added up and down cursor keys to on-screen keyboard. Press shift then left and right cursor to use. Added ability to move the standalone and overlay keyboards. Controller configuration browsing screen can now preview configurations and the selection process now previews, then applies instead of directly selecting the configuration. The new big picture mode has been made the default experience. 
For compatibility purposes, you can access the old experience by using the command line option dash old big picture. Note that this functionality will be removed in a future update. And these are just a few of the more notable features here. There were so many others that came with this stable update and I didn't have time to include most of them in this video. But suffice it to say, I'm really excited to see what's next for the deck and Steam client going forward. Now, I'd love to know what you think. What's your favorite feature in this stable channel update? What are your thoughts on any of the stories we've covered today? Leave me a comment and let me know what you think. I would love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I've been able to continue making videos just like this one. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, consider making your pledge with the links below. And thanks. That's going to do it for now though. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today, and I'll see you next time.